lot to say though. So I'm Jocelyn and I'm super into quantum physics, but I like relating it as far as relationships go. Like I like relating it on a human level. This is my take. Are you ready? For a long time, I wanted to just like coach people on getting out of narcissistic dynamics and out of narcissistic family dynamics. The fascinating thing that I found, I came across an article one day that was called the narcissistic family dynamic and where it has like a narcissistic parent and they're very controlling. There's all this codependency and shame, guilt, and fear that's around these dynamics. They will psychologically set up a system within the children unconsciously they have no idea they're doing this but it's all based around the low vibrational emotions of shame guilt and fear so they usually have a scapegoat child someone that doesn't fit into the family and then a golden child or a bully put that to the side once I started studying quantum physics and entanglement and superposition and like everything oh like quantum tunneling all of that i started diving into that and i started seeing that literally the whole reality that we have based around us was created off of just emotions this is why law of attraction is so big why people are getting into it and believing it is because your thoughts will create a brain chemical release that will go in and feed your cells and you can actually see the whole narcissistic family dynamic in our whole societal structure so that's how like when people talk about the matrix that's what the matrix is the matrix was built off of low vibrational emotions like capitalism basically like I've seen this narcissistic dynamic play out in um personal relationships in a very close family you know my mom uh her uh, background yeah. her family background is just blah, blah. but um i will say that i do think it is a product of uh being a part of a capitalist society um, and there, yeah capitalism there are what here there are scapegoats it's like uh what do you call that it's like a fractal thing you know you you zero in you get closer you get closer and you, you go down to a personal family level and that dynamic is exactly the same uh there we are a scapegoated society there are scapegoated mm -hmm. children oh lady girlfriend um okay i learned Not so anymore, much no. Well, Boy. yeah, I could go on. Like, it's it's in school environments. That's why there's cliques. It's in work environments. You can even see it in corporations and the structures involved in there. There's there's like a whole pyramid scheme that completely mirrors the narcissistic family dynamic. And so it's it's oh. everywhere, literally. So that's that's the thing I dive into with my own videos is the things that are considered oh. scapegoated in society. Like for example, people with STDs. I know that's like a touchy subject, but like AIDS, when it came out, it's completely shamed and scapegoated. Like people right, can't even talk about their issues. The thing is too that I wanted to add, like, as far as evolution goes, even our bodies, like if you look at you know, the way that the amino acids and everything was constructed that have built the cells within our body. Our body is particle based. It's it's operating from the low vibrational emotions, not only from the food that we eat, but from the brain chemical releases. So as far as evolution goes, I mean, going back to like the double slit experiment, the reason yeah. why the observation of the of the observer affects the electron to act like a wave or a particle is because it's reacting from the fear-based, particle-based organism that's observing it, our human bodies. So that's why, as far as evolution goes, we're just barely understanding how important our thoughts are and the brain chemical releases behind them and the food we eat, all of them. It's a combination between those. I think the in a, I think for one, we're coming from a trauma-based society. So there's been some big traumas placed in our ancestral past, and that's still echoing through our our communication. And I, I really am starting to think that the history they've taught us is complete bullshit. Quite recent traumas as well in that, as well. Linear, in that. And I think the just one last piece. I think the other piece missing 
Jocelyn, in what you were saying earlier, is the energetic emanations of everybody that then interacts with each other as well. The biophysics, yeah. you know, oh, the bioelectricity. I was reading, I, was, I don't, don't remember where I got that info the other day, but they're saying that the, earth, that the body's energetic um, impulse travels through the earth at, at a huge rate to be able to um, communicate your energetic vibe through the earth right around the world. These were CIA documents actually apparently on a, sh on a talk show I was watching, but energetic emissions is what I was saying is that that's very real to me, the, the bioenergetic. On that no CJ, I think as you're saying the energetic frequencies, if we can vibrate to that same energetic frequency, we can allow every single atom in our body to come as one in harmony, then we can boom, transport ourselves and access those powers that are within ourselves that every single one of us have what the awakening and the enlightening and the uh that is is coming to the awareness of those powers within each one of ourselves as well a couple things uh first of all cj what you were saying yeah absolutely i follow graham hancock and how he says you know we're a species with amnesia Absolutely. Like, I yeah. feel like there are people out there that do not want us to know our true potential, that there are, there's actual evidence of higher consciousness beings from the past. There's actual physical evidence of that. So that was the one thing I wanted to touch on. But the other thing, we're all separate. We all have that perception in a way, at least the majority of us, because it's a projection of the fact that we actually have split aspects of ourselves. So when you have these low brain chemical releases when you're younger, like these traumatic experiences growing up, they're going to cause low vibrational brain chemical releases and that will cause you to split off or have what's called cognitive dissonance. It's where your personality splits off into different aspects. This is what people call like the ego or the shadow aspects of us. It's because wow. we're, right. we're projecting that we are separate within ourselves. We don't remember that we are infinite, powerful creators, that well, at the core of us, our atoms down. have these mm -hmm. abilities to be a wave which is infinite possibilities, right? right? So as a spiritual community, what are we doing when we point, when we project onto others that they are purposely doing this to us or that this has purposely been done to us? Exactly. Um, it's a projection of our own shame and emotions. emotions. I think it's already happened. I mean, for me, I've, al I've already had cancer. You know, so that's why I'm so passionate about this is because, like, especially when we look into free radicals, don't even get me started on free don't radicals. Even. They're in everything, the toxins, food, everything. So, oh. yeah, you want to, they're the cause of mental illnesses and physical diseases. So, yeah, you want to know how you control a society, you pump oh. them full of free radicals. So, you can only you can only control what happens to you in your own small way. You know, don't fucking ever drink out of a plastic water bottle. You know, that's part oh no, of I am right now. <laughs> uh oh. <Shit. laughs> well, you know, seriously what the though, I've been. Well, I went crazy anal about it after I researched. So now I'm finally relaxing. Because there is, there's still stress and fear that comes along with, like, being overly anal about everything that you do. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I went insane a little bit about that. Like, parasites, don't even get me started on those. I could go on for days. <laughs> oh, oh, honey. We got to So talk. Now, now I'm relaxing. I'm like, okay, let's drink out of a plastic water bottle. <laughs> Right, and that's really, really good, and I'm just really proud of you for that because it takes so much to, um, even in my own experience, like it takes so much her bottle. to stop the hyper vigilance. Um, yeah. And I think, like, obviously, you're a very strong person, and you getting, you know, I can't believe you just said that, like you've already had cancer. Like, whoa, that's. Um, that's some shit like you're badass you know that happened yeah. for a reason and i don't think glad that you're living fearlessly because that's what's up yeah <laughs> it took me a while i mean at, especially after i found out i pretty much lost my mind i would say for a while i was like paranoid well, schizophrenic yeah. and went and lived in my car 
Like, just lost it. I was like, fuck society, fuck doctors, fuck all of them. And I was like, I'm just going to take care of this by myself. So <laughs> I'm like, I can't stand authority figures and <laughs> all that. <laughs> well, well, are you avoiding sugar? I am I now. That's actually what, that's what I'm <laughs> cleansing right now because I'm on another like parasite cleanse because, of course, I'm anal about that. So, yeah, I've cut out all sugar. All I'm doing right good, now is good, good. drinking herbal teas and water. So Good. Oh, perfect, perfect. Yay. Keep on, yeah. girlfriend. That's where you I'm got at. It. <laughs> good. It's on that good. level, honestly. Uh, because What's sugar it? is cancer's favorite food, and yeah. it's also the favorite food of... Uh, and, uh, and mold and parasites yeah the one thing i want to touch on that is you know i i'm a really big fan of ken wilber he's like a genius to me he kind of combines quantum physics and psychology and I, spirituality I'm... he talked about how as humans we go through the oral anal phase right it's from zero months to 18 months old when we're going through that age of development so in infancy, right? So if anything goes wrong, anything at all, aka the low vibrational emotions of shame, guilt, and fear are projected into our environment during <laughs> that phase of development, then we will create an oral fixation, an addiction, or an allergy to food, like not wanting to touch it. So think about where we are all of us as humans how much we emotionally eat it's it's a chemical combination so every time that emotion arises in our experience we want to put something in our mouth well even so, being somebody with adhd i uh not to interrupt i want you to keep going but like yeah the uh um, you're fine the my doctor was explaining to me how like ADHD people with ADHD are more likely to be this is kind of crude but uh chronic masturbators overeaters or smokers because it is a instant gratification and yeah. it's also yeah. uh, something tactile we're attracted oh, to the, the programming we're we're attracted to the vibrational and chemical programming that we had when we grew up in the relationships we had so we keep attracting those same relationships that will trigger those brain chemical releases mm -hmm. and and that's why we uh -huh. eat so it goes yes. all the way back to that phase of development and yes. so, so and that is a part of awakening and consciousness is uh, being mindful in that moment and not letting your urges and your brain chemical releases control you as those situations arise to trigger you. The tricky thing about even organic food is you've got an even you've got to go back even further to how much it's been genetically modified. For example, uh -huh. carrots and bananas; those have been genetically Born. modified by man. Bananas. Born. Actually, their original state, the seeds are are big. Man has genetically modified them. So even if it says organic, it's still been genetically modified. Same thing with carrots. Carrots right, were so never originally orange. They uh, were so actually like purple and black. So here's my take too. I completely agree with Otho. Like um, I feel like, again, with all of these fields of study and these, you know, categories and kind of cliques and, and segregations that we all kind of merge into, it's so important to understand that all of them really are compatible, you know, like science and spirituality totally go together. And that's my whole goal is like merging the gap between all of these like different fields of study because you have to understand that yeah the basis and the foundation of the universe is quantum physics quantum mechanics that's the basis and that's kind of the mentality that we need to get back to is kind of like how our observation and our consciousness affects quantum entities to act like a particle or a wave right like our we are affecting it so but it's still important to understand the science, the biology, the psychology that has created this reality. And so once you have that foundation of knowledge, then you can start maneuvering 
around to get down to the core. Does that make sense? You still have to understand how our current reality is set up with science. But the thing about scientists is even what Ofa was saying as well. Their observation is affecting whatever they're observing. So that's why I always question, like, hey, if a scientist at a cancer cell under a microscope, who's to say how much their observation is affecting that cell and its ability to heal or not? Because their Ooh, organism is going to be affecting it. So... Wow. I mean, that's why, yeah, like, that's totally the way my thinking goes is you have to respect science and where it's come from, but also understand that everyone's observation is going to affect these quantum entities no matter what.